Hey again guys and welcome back. Today is a new day and a new year. Happy New Year and happy holidays to everybody. But Canada Post has been working so time for another mailbag. First one up is this guy. This cost me $2.45 November 21st to December 22nd. So it's pretty quick. Um, fuse puller clip. Very descriptive this time. And that's these things here. If you've seen, I think it was my last mailbag, I got pieces like this to pull fuses, uh, like this, automotive style fuses, out of automotive style housings. So basically I ordered all these at the same time and these guys just go in and clip like this and you can pull out the fuse. These guys seem to work exactly the same but they have a little bit of a tension lever onto them. So where this one here is just the tension of the plastic, this one here feels like you can give it a little force. So let's see. It clips in the same. Oh, but it doesn't, see, it doesn't pull back unless you put a little bit of force onto there. Oh, it's not actually as strong either. Well, I think it's a fail for these little guys. I'm glad I bought more than just the, just uh, these guys, because, I mean, yeah. So that doesn't really work. Yeah, there's no way to put that in a different tension or anything, but these guys do have a glass fuse puller. Let's see, which seems to be better than these guys. So these guys seem better for the automotive type things. But let's see. You know what? This actually might be for a glass fuse too. So let's see. Yeah, that pulled that glass fuse, no problem. And on the back side, they have these little clip here. Yeah. So I think they have their place, but if you're just going to buy one type, I think this kind is better. Although the bigger fuses, like the maxi fuses, may be better on these guys. We'll have to get a bunch of fuses and put these guys through their paces. But yeah, for the price, this was uh, two bucks. 245 for five of these not a bad price and honestly to have this and this in your emergency kit takes up no space takes up no weight might as well just get both next one up is this one here it just says electronics ic and then some numbers i don't recognize times two times one uh 184 usd is what it says and i think that's pretty accurate 369 canadian uh, it took just over a month, month and a week. Uh, this this is interesting though. These this is from a series of um, post bag items I got from the Bulgarian post system. I ordered them from China on eBay, but uh, seems to have gone through Bulgaria. Okay, there's two of something, and it's two little modules. Take a look at what's in here. Leaving. Okay, let's take a closer look at these guys. So these guys are constant voltage, constant current, adjustable step down modules. So it's something similar to this, uh, this is a step down module, so it takes a higher voltage, converts it to a lower one. But this here is current limited by the load. So if you have something that draws an uh, amp and a half, this will output an amp and a half. Simple as that. However, these guys are for two things, I believe LEDs, which cannot regulate themselves, they need a load resistor or something to limit the current and for charging batteries like lithium batteries which have to be charged in a constant current constant voltage uh, 
uh, way. So these were actually very inexpensive, only a, a, like less than two dollars Canadian each. So I, I got a pair, and I think they would be really useful for running projects where, especially LED projects, where I needed to make sure that something was current limited, but using a inline resistor would actually burn off too much um, um, too much efficiency. So that's pretty cool. I think I want to set this up with an LED and give that a shot. Um, but there's three potentiometers here, and as far as I know, a constant current, constant voltage um, I see only needs two potentiometers, one for current, one for voltage. But let's set this up and we'll figure out how it works. Like you just saw in that montage, I've come up with this. So I've soldered some wires to the module here. And uh, this module, if you're interested, is based around the uh, JM86, oh sorry, LM2596S IC. So I've set this thing up here. I've got wires soldered to the module itself. Um, it does have diode protection, looks like on both ends, which is good. Um, I have the output going to this little LED here. This LED runs between 9 and 12 volts. And I'm going to be using this 18-volt uh, tool battery. I'll just be poking the ends of this wire into there. But I'd be terrified to use this unprotected. I'm not sure if this one has protection built in. So I soldered this wire, the input wire, the positive, to a glass fuse, and hopefully that'll protect me in case of a mistake. Uh, so now I've read on the listing that it is clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease, so I'm going to decrease all of these until they start clicking. It's more than 10 turns. Not sure how many turns. I'm gonna do the other ones. Still not sure what the third pot would be for. Well, that one's clicking. Okay, and my usual multimeter, the uh, the new one, the little one, is not here right now. It is actually, um, it is actually in my travel kit. So I will use this Mastercraft multimeter, which will do the job. And I'm going to clip it, clip the leads onto the LED here. That's why I soldered to the actual LED tabs and not to, uh, to the actual LED and not to the tabs so I can actually fit the multimeter leads here. There we go. Okay, well, uh, I guess nothing left to do but to do it now. So let's put the negative in. There we go. This is not the recommended method to use lithium batteries, but a lot of you have been giving me crap over using a switching power supply to tune a switching power supply, so... Oh boy. 
Okay. So this is on. It says CC slash CV is red. Um, CH is blue and the OK is not on. So I guess we start turning one at a time and see what happens. So the LED is not lit. We have 1.445 volts. Should stop this from moving around a little bit. The, um, there we go. The um, um, glass fuse in here is a five amp fuse. So it should be okay. I'm gonna start spinning this and we'll see what happens. Voltage looks like it's climbing. So that looks like that's the voltage pot. So we want to get up to around nine volts. Wow, this is an incredible amount of adjustment. This might be a fine adjust and coarse adjust. I'm not sure. We'll go until this pot can't handle it anymore. Oh, click, that's the end, 2.7. We're gonna back this off. Use my more dexterous hand, even though it blocks your vision a little bit. Oops, counterclockwise. Okay, we're almost back down to original. It might keep bleeding off because there's no load on here, really. All right, I'm going to try the second pot now. The second pot is not doing anything. That could be that this one needs to be adjusted now. No, nope, still only climbing in voltage very slightly. Let's try this uh, third pot here. Oh, LED came on. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure what this, this one here does. I'm gonna flip this one back. Move this one. Look at that immediately. Seven, okay, seven volts, eight volts, oh, and everything's climbing. Wonder if this is the current. So this is running right now, 8.36 volts. Try this first pot here, turn it down. Oh, I believe, okay, I believe this is our current pot. This one here. These wires are not getting warm. It's good. There we go. Yep. So it looks like I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to turn this pot. I'm going to see what happens here. Oh, the constant uh, current, constant voltage LED is not lit. Okay, this doesn't seem to do anything, so we're going to turn this one again. We're climbing 8 volts. Yeah, this seems like the fine adjust. This seems like the coarse adjust. But I wonder what the current adjust is. If I spun this all the way down, the middle one, is that going to go dead? 
that's all the way down. Let's go forward. Oh, I think that's getting brighter. Yeah, that is getting brighter. So I believe the middle one is the current adjust. Hmm. Oh, and now the OK light is on. Very interesting. This is actually taking quite a quite a while, so I think we're going to make a dedicated video just to this module, and I think we'll move on with the rest of the mailbag items now that I can see that this is working. Next one up, we have this one here, which says socket times five, and this was ordered November 11th and uh, came here December 22nd. A dollar fifty-two for all five of whatever's in there. Oh, I almost chopped through something. So these are little bulb holders, I hope they are at least, for T5 bulbs. And it looks like they certainly smell like rubber, which smells terrible. But let's see if they fit. These are the T5 bulbs from the other day. Oh, wow. So, well, this one's cut and the rubber here, I hope it doesn't get too hot. Interesting. We'd have to run these at full brightness for a while to see if these sockets are any good. Because I do need sockets for an upcoming project. Maybe this is a socket I actually cut through. Oh, wow. If you look inside of that one, I don't know if you can see. Those wires are all but touching each other. That's not good. This one, they're fully separate. And this one, they're like touching each other. Would you look at that? These things come apart. And they're just little slip connectors. You know what? I might like this better. I might actually 3D print my own housings and put these inside because, yeah, look at that. That's a, it's an absolute mess. Maybe I can even straighten them out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can straighten them out. Huh. Would you look at that? Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't really know if these will do. I might order some more in the meantime. But until then, I think I'm I think that's all we're going to find out about these guys. So, let's move on to the next items. The next one up is this one. It just says module times 1. And this was ordered November 21st, arrived December 22nd, $2.16. And a question mark, because I don't actually know what's in there. This was my best guess based on the information I had. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at these things. So these were actually not what I thought they were. So these were a buck seventy-five. And these guys are. Well, let me open that up properly. These guys are arduino -y touch sensors. So you're just supposed to touch this pad here and the capacitive coupling between the your, your body and the ground plane here is supposed to be generate a small voltage which is probably amplified by a little amplifier on there. It's actually probably a purpose-built device, not actually an amplifier. It's going to be an amplifier with the a bunch of features and that should output a logic high or logic low to be interpreted from an Arduino. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think Pile of Stuff got some of these in and um, I figured I would play with them too. I'm not a big fan of uh, touch things. I rather physical buttons but I think these are pre-debounced and so you actually 
it should be easier to use these than than literal tactile switches. But yeah, I don't think um, I'm going to have the time today to set up an Arduino and make sure it works. Um, but maybe we can do a little bit of a test. Let's get a breadboard and see. idea if this will work but uh, there's a little LED on the back here right down there uh, and so I can try to shade it a little bit with my with my hand there and just see if we can get the, the touch working so this is not a comprehensive tutorial just want to see if they work so I'm gonna press OK here I should have 5 volts going through here I hope this 5 volt device soon find out if I touch it oh let's look at that it works actually it's quite responsive can you guys see that let me just shade it a little bit there we go should be able to see it now that's impressive so yeah what makes this very cool is you get the whole touch functionality with a dedicated touch IC so you don't actually have to do anything in the Arduino aside from treat this as a logic high or logic low. So like switch getting connected to uh, 5 volts or switch getting connected to ground. Simple as that. So that's actually pretty cool. I can't wait to give these a shot and maybe integrate them into some projects. But yeah, it seems actually very easy to use. Let's go on to the last one. And the final item of the day is a little spoilery ESP8266 ESP12 development board module times one. And November 11th to December 30th, uh, $3.15. Don't want to cut anything this time. And what this guy is. This is a Wemos D1 Mini. And so I think it's just an ESP8266 in a, with a USB to a serial converter built in and or built onto the board and a specific footprint. So I've got a ton of microcontrollers to try out in the new year. So this year, if you guys are not watching from Patreon, which means that um, this guy will be added to the fold and I'm going to learn how to use each and every one of them. It seems to be a really small little convenient form factor and apparently these guys pack quite a punch but I guess we'll find that out together in 2020. And this fantastic pile of gadgets and things is today's mailbag. Thanks again for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons. You guys are super appreciated. To my watchers, my commenters, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you guys have a great 2020.